This is a test of the Rode VideoMic Pro using my Zoom H1 Handy Recorder. The Mo Rode VideoMic Pro uh, has been redesigned with the new Rycoat shock mount. It's a nice little cradle which houses the new VideoMic Pro instead of relying on that tedious rubber band design which would stretch out and alter the way the shock mount would perform. One thing I don't like about the Rode VideoMic Pro is the battery compartment because it, of where it's situated, it's kind of difficult to take on and uh, take off and put back on. Uh, it does take a, a while and you I had to take the foam windscreen off in order to get it aligned properly in order to close it with the battery in. Uh, by contrast to the regular Marode video mic, I was able to pop that one off because it's on the top and it was real easy to get to. So that's something to keep in mind if you have to change your battery in the middle of a shoot. But I do like that it has two different switches, one for the power on, which offers you mic on flat, which is the traditional uh, minus 40 megahertz to 20 megahertz setting. And then you have the, uh, the plus 80 megahertz uh, high pass filter, but it also has a, a three position uh, decibel level uh, setting. Right now I've got it set at in the middle at zero uh, but it can go at either minus 10 zero or plus 20. The uh, the the video mic pro is a little bit larger than the previous version uh, that gives it a lot more real estate with which to record and it makes the microphone more sensitive so you get a better recording and the uh, one thing though is that while the uh, Rycro Rycoat cradle housing uh, shock mount does do a great job of absorbing the shock. I'm shaking it right now. I'm a little concerned because it's only about, I don't know, maybe two thirds of a half as thick as the one on the video mic. So you don't want to manhandle this thing too much, but I rather doubt it's going to break if you, um, if you do, but it's just by comparison, I thought it was noteworthy. Okay, I'm recording on the standard flat setting of the Rode video mic and I'm about to move it to a uh, video mic pro. I'm recording on the standard flat setting of the Rode video mic pro and I'm moving it now to the minus 10 dB switch. So now I'm speaking at minus 10 dB on flat and now I'm moving to Back to zero. I'm back to zero now, talking on the minus 10 dB, moving from minus 10 to zero. Now I'm at zero decibel, and you can hear the difference in my voice. Now I'm going to be moving to the plus 20 dB switch, so you can hear the difference in talking on the video mic pro. Moving back to zero, I'm now going to turn on the high pass filter. This is the high pass filter that is designed to help uh, DSLR preamps uh, handle recording and it is also good for long distances. I'm moving from zero to the minus 10 dB, which is where I am now, um, so that you can get a get a idea of the range using the high pass filter. So I'm at minus 10 dB. I'm moving back to zero, so now I'm at the standard zero setting of the VideoMic Pro, and now I'm moving to the plus 20 dB so that you can hear the difference in the noise attenuation of the product as you move to the higher setting. Now back to standard setting again. Now I'm going to be doing a noise test. I'm just going to sit here in silence in my car and I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro set at the flat setting of the, the power on flat setting at zero dB for five seconds.
Now I'm going to move to the minus 10 dB on the flat setting. Now I remove, I will move to plus 20 dB. Now I'm going to move back to the center, back to zero dB, and I'm going to turn it to, to the 80 megahertz high pass filter and start again to minus 10 dB. Now I'm going to move back to the zero setting for at 80 megahertz high pass filter. Now I am at plus 20 decibels at 80 megahertz.